Hello, and welcome back to Ocean Inverts. Today we're going to be talking about corals, the small but mighty marine invertebrates that you might have seen if you've ever gone snorkeling. Coral reefs can be found across the globe, but arguably the most well-known reef is the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. And if you've been keeping up with the news the past few years, it hasn't been doing so well. To learn more about corals and the challenges they are facing today, we interview Drew Harvell, a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at Cornell University. Her research focuses on examining the health and sustainability of ocean ecosystems and the diseases that are impacting corals. To get to know the full picture from an expert, we asked Dr. Harvell for her take on what's going on. The deal is that our corals are under increasing stress from climate change. And so because of the symbiotic algae that they require, that's where their food comes from. They have solar, they're basically solar powered animals. They're very sensitive to small increases in temperature. And so probably many people know that our reefs worldwide have been heavily hit uh, by bleaching events, which are caused by really often, it's just one or two degrees of temperature warming. The symbiotic algae corals need to survive are called zooxanthellae. They convert sunlight into energy and give corals their beautiful color. Unfortunately, warming oceans are causing stress on corals, which react by expelling their zooxanthellae. This leaves behind the white coral skeleton, a process known as coral bleaching. However, bleaching is not the only problem corals are facing. With increasing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, ocean acidification is also a threat. Carbon dioxide, which is absorbed uh, into the oceans, creates a more acidified environment. The process of calcification in our oceans also requires uh, uh, rather precise pH conditions. And so in an acidified ocean, corals are not able to calcify. After hearing all of this, you might be wondering, why are corals so important? Coral reefs are foundational ecosystems that provide many underappreciated services. These range from acting as nursery habitats for fish, wave breaks for tropical storms, and even changing the chemical composition of the local environment. However, there are things that corals cannot protect themselves from, namely human-caused pollution. This includes agricultural runoff, oil rig spills, and the commodity we use every day, plastic. Dr. Harvell, along with collaborators such as Jolie Lam, did work on coral reef health in Indonesia, and they saw firsthand the detrimental effects plastics are having on our oceans. We're surveying the health of corals in Indonesia, and Jolie decided she wanted to start taking data on plastics, like bits of fishing line or plastic bags that were on our transects. So we were, we were uh, recording the health of every single of the hundreds and hundreds of corals on every one of our transects. And what, uh, what we found in this study was that corals that were in contact with plastic had a much higher risk of disease. They were more likely to be sick. Jolie then went on to do the, replicate this work in Thailand, Myanmar, and Australia, and overwhelmingly found uh, this pattern of plastics uh, being related to higher levels of coral disease. Despite the challenges corals are facing, it is important to remember that there is still hope. Scientists are hard at work to create and grow more heat-tolerant corals that would be able to withstand rising ocean temperatures. Looking towards possible solutions, we asked Dr. Harvell what policy she would change to protect corals and decrease the threat of disease. Well, I would certainly establish more marine protected areas. Uh, we have good data showing that corals inside well-regulated, carefully patrolled marine protected areas have a much lower level of coral disease than outside. I would totally reverse uh, the level of greenhouse gas warming. Uh, that's a long-term project, but we need to start it right now because otherwise nothing else we do in the next 50 years is gonna really matter. Um, uh, I think preserving seagrass beds can have unexpected benefits uh, in terms of um, keeping oxygen levels high in the in uh, adjacent to coral reefs, providing habitat, providing filtration services, uh, and, and similarly, same thing with mangrove beds. And so 
it's really, there are other natural ecosystems that contribute to the health of coral reefs that, that need to be considered. Thank you for watching this episode of Ocean Inverts. We hope you learned a lot about corals and that you can tune in for our next segment soon.